In this video, we're going to look at some of the recent updates to VS Code. There were several great improvements. If you want to learn more about VS Code, check out my VS Code course at vscodehero.com. I also have a VS Code cheat sheet that you can download for free. The link is in the description. It has keyboard shortcuts, my favorite extensions, themes, fonts, and icon packs. If you find this video helpful, like and subscribe. Several UI options have been added to the layout controls in the title bar. You can use the setting Workbench Layout Control Type to change these settings. It can be set to Menu, which will just give you a basic menu where you can show and hide the primary sidebar, secondary sidebar, and panel. You can choose Toggles, which gives you the options here in three buttons, or you can choose Both, which is the default, and you'll have the three buttons as well as an extended menu. Enabling the new Workbench Editor history-based language detection provides an improved automatic language detection algorithm for untitled editors. When you open a new untitled editor, the new algorithm will detect the language of the document with much less text input than before. Local History of Files is now available in the Timeline view. Now, depending on your settings, every time you save a file, a new entry is added to the list. This is independent of source control, so even if you're not using a version control system like Git, you can still benefit from basic version control. From an entry, you can compare changes, restore an entry, or delete or rename entries. There's a new Explorer setting for file nesting. This will allow derived related files in a directory to be visibly grouped together under a single parent file. So for instance, over here, we have package lock JSON and package JSON. We also have some TS config files. So let's enable this and notice how they get grouped together. You would never edit the package lock JSON file, so no need to show it, but it's there if you need it. Same with the TS config files. They're there if you need them. And if we move up to the app directory, you'll notice the index.ts file with some nested index files that you would normally not have to edit, but they're there if you need them. And this just visually cleans up the interface. VS Code now allows users to sponsor their favorite extensions. When an extension can be sponsored, VS Code will render a sponsor button in the extension view details page. And by the way, my CodeStacker theme can be sponsored. The three-way merge editor can be enabled by setting git merge editor to true. This will be enabled by default in future releases. The merge editor allows you to quickly resolve git merge conflicts. Open the merge editor by clicking on a conflicting file in the source control view. Checkboxes are available to accept and combine changes in theirs or yours. The new command center can be enabled via the window command center setting. The command center replaces the normal title bar and lets you quickly search for files in your project. There's a quick open dropdown with your recent files and a search box. The command center also has a button on the right to display the quick access options. And on the left, there are go back and go forward buttons to navigate through your editor history. The new do not disturb mode hides all non-error notification pop-ups when enabled. Hidden notifications are still available to view in the notification center. You can toggle do not disturb mode by opening the navigation center using the bell icon in the right of the status bar and clicking the slash bell icon. When you see the slash bell icon, you know you're in do not disturb mode. You can now easily move between a desktop session of VS Code and the browser-based VS Code.dev. When you have a project open with a linked GitHub repository, go to your file menu and you'll notice share and then copy VS Code.dev link. Now we can go to our browser and open it up. Did you know that you can quickly organize your JavaScript imports? Open up the command palette and search for Organize, and you'll see Organize Imports, or Shift-Alt-O is the shortcut. Notice how it has automatically organized them in alphabetical order. Now, maybe I have an import that is dependent on the previous import, and alphabetical order could possibly break things. So you can actually group things. So let me undo that. Let's say I always want React to be on top. So I just need to add an empty line, and now it will organize these two. And let me go ahead and mix these up, and then let's save that, and let's organize Alt-Shift-O. And now it has only organized this group and it has left this top group alone. 
TypeScript 4.8 is now included with VS Code. This support now adds some common syntax error reporting to JavaScript files. This includes parsing errors as well as invalid redeclaration of block scoped variables. So notice here, we are declaring thing twice and we have an error here. We cannot redeclare block scoped variables. If you don't like this extra syntax error reporting, you can disable it using the JavaScript validate setting. You can now drag and drop local files and folders into a VS Code.dev browser window. Did you know that you can test out a theme on VS Code.dev without installing it? You have to use the themes extension ID and theme name in the URL. To test my CodeStacker theme, you could go to VS Code.dev slash theme slash CodeStacker dot CodeStacker dash theme slash CodeStacker percent 20 theme. That is very long and the link is in the description below. Those were all of the things that stood out for me. There were lots of other minor improvements that you can read in the official release notes linked in the description. VS Code is continually improving. Let me know what your favorite feature is. Like this video to help me out and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this.